Good day fellow investors, I started this channel about 10 months ago already and in that time I have discussed, recommended about 30 stocks. Today I want to go through those stocks, at least as much as I can do them in one video, and show how I think and tell you that the past analysis are there only for information where you can go now and see what was the case when I made the videos. Now things change, things always change with stocks. So in order to see what has ch changed, you have to adjust your model, the model that you use to analyze a stock. Nevertheless, in that period, I have recommended 30 stocks, let's say recommended or analyzed. Of those 30 stocks, 20 were winners, five were draws and five were total duds. So the average return of, let's say, the YouTube channel on a very, very diversified, mostly educational portfolio where I analyzed a lot of profiles and everything was 11.9%, which is very, very good. The median return was 12.36%, where for such a diversified portfolio with such a pressure of giving free new stocks every month, what I did the whole of 2017, I think it's an amazing result and I think a lot of you really took advantage of what I have been sharing. There have been some duds, we're going to go through them, but the most are winners because I always try to invest with a margin of safety and the duds are not yet finished stories, so there might be more opportunities. I want to do this recap video to really sum up what I have been doing. From now on I won't do any more stocks to buy, I will do every Sunday for now, surely a stock analysis. So really pros and cons of investing in such a stock, which will be much more educational, much more informative than a bullish video on a stock. A bullish video really attracts views, but I don't want to be the person who attracts views. I want to be the person who shares knowledge. And therefore we're going to shift from the stock to buy video to the stock analysis, Sunday stock analysis. But let's now dig into the recap of the channel to give you, perhaps you will find some new ideas. The links are in the description below of the past analysis. You will see how that evolved and you will see how that fits your portfolio. When that stock comes again on my research list to update everything, I will make then again a full video because I like always to check a stock. Okay, would I buy it now? Doesn't matter what happened in the past, doesn't influence my decision to buy or not. Always look, okay, from now, would I buy that stock? If I own a stock and I wouldn't buy it, then it is a sell. Nevertheless, let's start. The first stock I discussed was Harmony Gold Mining Company. I discussed it at 1.8, I think, and now the price is 2.3. The reason why I discussed is note that gold exposure, extremely high gold costs. As gold prices went up a little bit, we can see the result is very, very positive for Harmony. From now on, it is again a bet on gold. If gold prices drop, Harmony will drop like a rock. Plus there is some copper in, in Papua New Guinea, which is a long-term long shot project. But the basics of the company, let's say the margin of safety was at 1.6, 1.7 when I recommended or analyzed the stocks. I think the title was bargain long-term investment. As a long-term investment, it's still perhaps a bargain, but but the risk is already higher because the risk is a function of price. June 25, I've discussed the Hein Celestial Group. It really dropped because everybody was thinking that Amazon will disrupt the sector. I said that Amazon will use their products. And when the market acknowledged that, the stock immediately exploded, but then there were ups and downs, earnings, whatever. A lot has happened since then. Nevertheless, again, the stock is above what was the price when I discussed it. Nevson, my favorite miner, was at 2.35, now it is 2.27, it was much lower, it was a little bit higher. However, the story has really improved and I have to make an updated new video on Nevson to show you what has been going on here and what will probably happen in the future. Very interesting stock, it remains a stock that I own. Then, hmm, the first dud, Amira Nature Foods, I was recommending it at 4.7, then it was above that, even reached 7 after there was very positive expectations on the earnings. Earnings disappointed, firstly not, but secondly very well. The management didn't manage to take advantage of the increased rice prices and they had issues with 
receivables, which is very, very unfortunate because KyRBL, the Indian competitor, did extremely well. Nevertheless, the book value of the company, everything, the year, one year change is just 17% down. So the risks are higher, but there is still potential for this company. Also something that I have to address in a new video when I get the time. Now, something very important, what I want to discuss here and what I saw and why I will not do a recommendations, I will do analysis. Amira is a very fast moving stock, as you can see on the chart behind me. Uh, after earnings, it dropped like a rock very fast. And then if you're a retail unexperienced investor, you see the earnings, earnings were positive growth, but it was not what people expected and the stock dropped like a rock. And the beginner investor looks, okay, earnings were positive. Why did it drop? Book value is very high. Everything looks perfectly. Why did it drop? And if you're a beginner, one that unfortunately watched my YouTube videos, you cannot react immediately. You cannot know, okay, what do I have to do if earnings come like this, if earnings come like this, if earnings come like this, what do I do in the immediate second when earnings come in? So no more stock recommendation, stock analysis, and you have to make your own model where, where you see how do you react to the risks and rewards. And I will do my best to explain the risks and rewards with every stock we analyze from now on. As I said, every Sunday, there will be a video on a stock, a stock analysis, Sunday stock analysis on a video. There will be plenty more stocks, which I think will add a lot more value to you. And you will see, you will see how that feels your risk, risk reward and your your knowledge about the stock plenty of interesting stocks coming not don't to worry store capital buffett bought it i thought it's a good read it's a good return on investment and the stock increased but reads have a lot of headwinds so okay it's again another video that i have to make on reads why why the first stock that we discussed that doubled it was simply too cheap the price to earnings ratio was 10 or something for extreme growth and of course the company doubled in the last what six seven eight nine months brazilian utility play copao elp good dividend stable business didn't go anywhere it go went up but then it returned to the current price again an interesting i didn't look it in the last few months what are the news but i have to reread about that and inform myself I wait for cheaper stocks in Brazil to look at again at what's going on. Momo, I said YY is better and the results were clearly seen here. Momo performed much lower than YY. Chenier Energy, the deal was I was discussing, I was analyzing at Klarman owns it 12% to 15 per year. And that's exactly what the company delivered. Perhaps I also discussed how Klarman is rebalancing. So the current prices allow you to rebalance around a position that you want to take in relation to gas prices and future prices. Look at the video for more information. Then Norilsk price was around 15. Now it's almost 20. The analysis stays nothing new there. They're investing more. So nothing there to emphasize. Whirlpool, I discussed how more demographics, Indian growth will do well for the company. There are some headwinds. It is volatile, but long, long term, an interesting company. Sketchers. My deal was that retail, US retail is not the focus on the company, even if the market was focusing on it. Growth came from Asia. It was clear that Skechers was a winner. Starbucks, the franchise for me was too cheap at 52, even if there was some risk. It is volatile, so still an interesting company, but I would prefer to see better earnings growth. Perhaps we will see it cheaper again. Yupai, the Chinese asset manager, of course, many were happy about this recommendation, so I'm happy also about it. Now, much more riskier as the price is 50% and even was 100% from the recommendation. Nike, again, too cheap in September when I discussed it. Just comparing Nike to other companies was crazy on the valuation, so the result is here to be seen. Qualcomm, also 5G exposure that I discussed, and bam, there came the acquisition possibility and it jumped 22% very quickly. A.H. Bello, this was a cigar but educational investment, but also did good because the value of A.H. Bello was higher than the 440 when I discussed it. Now it's 520, so a little bit more risky, but perhaps there is still value. Mm, cigar but like investment. You can check the video again to see what is a cigar but investment. 
On September 11, I said that bond yields don't tell a nice story. The bond ETF is down 4%, but for a treasury ETF, that's a lot. Eldorado, a dud, I was discussing at 230, saying how the value of the assets is 4. If there are impairments, if things don't work out in Greece, I thought that the value of Eldorado will be at least at 2 to 30 so that there was a margin of safety. It's still possible. We'll see. I have to adjust the model again and see what and see whether it is a bargain now or not or the stock might drop even lower. So Eldorado, it's a bet. It's a bet on the arbitrage process. It's a bet on a company. It's a bet on gold. So this is not an investment. This is a bet. So if you invest if you bet on Eldorado, understand that it is a bet. Nobody knows how the arbitrage will end up if you are not in the Greek Arbitrage Council. So pure, pure bet. Then I discussed the risks on Pretium Resources, which was around 8, 9. And I got 200 comments on Seeking Alpha, hate comments, how I'm a short seller, how I'm anything, blah, blah, blah. And then I got even more comments in October when the management deliver good results. But my thesis was that the results will be volatile and three months later there came bad results. And then I got my apologies on Seeking Alpha but it was interesting how that quickly changes and how people are emotional about their investments. That was a big big lesson for me. Then stocks to watch October, air cap holdings didn't go anywhere, it went up then down so nothing there to mention. Aircap is a company that buys planes and then leases them to air companies. Synchrony Financial did very good, 36, Buffett it was buying, so now it, the price is almost 37, when I discussed it was 30, so it looks like a good bet here. Guyana, Goldfields, 340 when I discussed it, I think now it's 380, so there have been some positive developments, gold prices have risen, so again, a gold hedge. Treehouse October, a dud. The management is really terrible. They are destroying value as if the market sees that they are destroying value, perhaps things will improve with time. But again, the analysis perhaps still stands, but you have to see if the management will manage to get this out of the hole. Xinyuan, Chinese real estate, 540, 550 or 570 recommendation. Then it went up a lot, almost to eight, and then it dropped again to six. The real estate analysis stays, you have to see how news from China, from the real estate market will affect it. It is a big risk in China and real estate, so be careful when investing in such companies. However, there is an attractive dividend, so risk reward. Colony Nordstar, read the management issued one guidance, then the news came and they completely missed it. They made a mess and it is a mess and you can see that the result is a mess. The Andersons food company, I saw it as a defensive stock. It is a defensive stock. It is up a little bit, but that doesn't mean anything. Kudian company discussed end November at around 12, 13, 14, and now it is 17. We'll see how that ends up in the long term. Facebook 175 didn't go anywhere, 182. The story is there, the analysis is there. CQ holding luxury company from China, 11, 12 when it was discussed, it's still around there. So we had 20 wins, 5 draws and 5 duds. The return was almost 12%, so I'm very, very happy about it. But I won't recommend any more stocks. I will do educational stock analysis. I think that I don't know who is watching. I really need to explain myself in a disclaimer. What is it I'm telling about when I recommend something and that's something that I can do on a website really in written, not in videos. I will do educational videos on YouTube, but recommendations will be written on a website really with clear indications about what, what, where and why. A video is not really the method. Is video can be educational and I will keep it educational on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments, not the questions if it is a buy or sell. For, for that, again, a deep analysis is necessary, which is not the point of this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.